Welcome back. Today we're diving into a fascinating discussion led by Dr. Gary Habermas, a historian and philosopher known for his work on the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Dr. Habermas presents a minimal facts argument, building a case from historical evidence, including Jesus' crucifixion and the disciples' experiences. He highlights how naturalistic theories have lost credibility over time, with critics often resorting to personal disbelief or philosophical objections. Dr. Habermas challenges skeptics with intriguing parallels, like the prevalence of near-death experiences. Join us as we explore this thought-provoking discourse on the resurrection and its implications. Let's dive in with Dr. Gary Habermas. So what is like your, your five-minute spiel on the evidence in support of the resurrection? These are facts. These are historical facts. And, and this is what you specialize in. So yeah. um, I, I start with what I call a minimal facts argument. It's a species of reliability, one of the reliability arguments. But where most reliability arguments are top-down arguments, if the book is reliable, it's like an umbrella. Everything under it gets kept you know, from the rain. If the book is, is generally true, whatever is reported under it is accurate. Mine's a bottom up. And instead of an umbrella, I would suggest uh, an example of a brick wall with individual facts being bricks that we put together to build a case from the bottom up. And I, I've used anywhere from three to seven over the years. Lately, I've been doing six. And I would say, Jesus died by crucifixion. His disciples had experiences that they believed were appearances of the risen Jesus. Because of their belief that he was raised, it is the event that has turned the world upside down religiously. In fact, a recent book on non-believing Jews and the resurrection, they even acknowledged, not being Christians, that Christianity is a resurrection religion. It was the resurrection that powered the religion, uh, to powered the teachings, even to the point of being willing to die. Uh, and we do have first century sources for the, the arguably the three largest names in Christianity. Uh, four, very important, it was proclaimed very early. And today, critics, the, the consensus position is that you can track the resurrection preaching back to immediately after the cross. In fact, the way it's often stated by, say, Bart Ehrman, is that when Paul said yes to Jesus on the way to, to Damascus, there was already a body of data called the early creeds that are later written in the New Testament, but they were already being noised abroad. When Paul said yes, there were these heavy creeds, about 80% of which are in the deity, death, resurrection of Jesus, because that's a major message. They were already in existence. So when Paul, Paul didn't invent Christianity, the main reason, when he came to Christ, the message he hated most, we already have data from that, that two-year period before Paul. And then the last two would be individuals, James, the brother of Jesus, and Paul, both of whom become Christians because they believed they had experiences which were appearances of the risen Jesus. Those are the six I would use. And to my knowledge, I've had dialogues with atheists, agnostics, scholars, specialists, and they don't dispute any of those. So how do they respond to this? That you have these facts and you establish them historically, and you say the best explanation of these facts is that God raised Jesus from the dead. Right. And there are these existing naturalistic attempts of explaining away these these facts. Yeah. What is the best one to your knowledge? And then why do you think that it fails? Someone just asked me that yesterday and I, I made the point. I don't you'd expect me to say this, but years ago, I would have told you the one that I thought was the hardest answer. Today, I would say not only are there no good ones, there, there are no good theories that you can really take and ride to the bank, so to speak. If you're a naturalist, you can really Take, take care of the resurrection with this, but the critics have generally given up coming, uh, espousing these theories. I did an article uh, some years ago where I argued that less than 25% of the critics in the last 25 years, about less than 25% use the naturalistic theories anymore. They, they will usually say something like this. Um, yeah, facts are good. I don't agree it's your your idea is the only way to go. But you know, you've got an evidence case and and if you pushed them a little bit and said, Well, what keeps you from believing the stuff yourself if the evidence is so good? 
Go ahead. Hume. Well, Hume, but I think generally they'll say, I just don't want to, I just don't want to believe. Really? And, and they will say miracles don't happen and that they say that they know you're ready. They don't often want to take you on. Um, another common a comment is, yeah, but you got a problem with your theory. What's that? Well, you've got some data for your theory, and I'm not exactly sure where I would go to refute it. But you're asking me, implicit in your argument, is you're asking me to believe in Middle Earth, Narnia, or if you want a secular example, Oz. You're asking me to believe in that. And there's no world like that. How do you know? Well, there's no, you know, look, everything we know from empirical science, there's not an ultimate universe. And when I'm talking to a person like that, I always go, time out. Let's talk about near-death experiences. And because the evidence has been coming in so well, in a recent book, up to 30 million people in North America, England, and Europe have claimed to have near-death experiences. So I could say, hey, some, let's just say the number's blown up too much and there's only 20 million. In a way, that's 20 million people who've been to Narnia, if you want to look at it that way. So don't tell me there's no empirical evidence for this. And they'll say, yeah, those are just experiences. You don't have data. Well, you don't say that to me. I, I, you know, I just gave, gave a paper yesterday. I, I know of 300 evidenced NDE accounts where what's reported is empirically verified. So if you can't refute it, and it's almost impossible to refute the, the NDEs, if you can't refute them and you have this alternate reality in what category? In the category of afterlife. Oh, so there may be an afterlife. Well, I didn't think so until today, but yeah, I guess maybe there is. Okay, now can we talk about resurrection? See, because I've opened the door to talk about this alternate reality, which may last forever, and you can't say anymore, yeah, but you're asking me to believe in Oz, because I would, I would say, I sure am, and I've got data for Oz. 